Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Alright, so we're going to be discussing rotary valves. A um, couple of things. You're going to need some tools. And I am not going to give you guys the specifications for this. Because this video is going to cover such a wide range of um, rotary valve two strokes. That you're going to definitely need your a book. So the book that I'm going to recommend you guys is the Climber Manual. Okay. There's the number right there, M350-9. It covers everywhere from 80 cc's to 350. Rotary valves, 1966 to 2001. The other thing you're going to need is a um, caliper vernier. And you can buy these. Oh, this is a general, so this is going to be a little bit more money. But you can buy a cheap one over at Harbor Freight for under 20 bucks. Okay. So, I'm um, checking out this engine here, and this is the one I'm working on. So, once you guys get your cover off and your clutch is all, all taken apart, um, you're going to expose this cover. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together roughly, and I'm going to show you guys what you have to do. Okay. So, um, basically, you're going to want to take an impact driver, which is right here, and break all your screws free. Okay. Which is what I use this one for. Alright, so I'm going to explain to you guys how this all works. And hopefully it uh, goes through because my camera has been acting up again. Alright, so you're going to need a small chisel. I recommend this one right here. This is a small chisel right there. And a small hammer also right here. Okay, because you're going to need to bend that little tab over. And there is nothing feeling more strength than a uh, small a small little chisel especially one that goes into a jackhammer okay so this is what you're going to need to knock that over and a big sledgehammer you know like this monster nah i'm just messing with you guys i'm just messing with you guys you guys can get away with a little a little tack hammer tap 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 a root and a little little chisel so you're going to basically put that on there you're going to tap that little tab back don't be afraid to whack it off there because it'll, it'll, it'll bend it back. And then you'll use a 19 millimeter socket. You're going to need a piston stop. Then your nut comes off. Your gear and your tab. On the gear, there's a little hole right there. See the hole? There's not one on the other side. The other side is just smooth as you can be. This little tab on this piece right here. See that tab? Goes into that hole right there in the front. And then you can see where I used the chisel. That tab bends over. And locks the nut into place. So it can't back off. After you get all your screws out. You can then take your intake off. If you have to pry it off. Pry it from the ears gently. Do not go too far in. Because there's a big giant o-ring here. Okay. So I'm going to explain to you guys how this works and how you know if your rotary valve is incorrectly. It is, in, is installed correctly, not incorrect. Installed correctly. So the engine rotates clockwise. Okay? So let's get this thing to clockwise. Okay. So right now, the piston is traveling upward and the valve is open. So right now, fuel and air is being sucked in through this port right here, the intake. And then on this port right here, it's injecting oil. That doesn't stop. That continuously oils even when the intake is not being used. So it's sucking it in. So the piston is moving up. It's now creating a suction at the bottom of the piston, sucking your in fuel mixture in. As it's compressing the old, the next stroke that was already before it, it's on top of the piston. So there, right now, the piston's doing two things. It's sucking at the bottom and compressing at the top. Spark plug fires, bang, driving the piston down. The valve closes, and right now it is pushing. So right now it's about halfway down. What it's doing is the exhaust is going out that port, okay, through the front. As this valve is closed and the piston is traveling down, the bottom part of the piston is now compressing. It is pushing all the fuel and air mixture up the transfer ports, these ports right here, okay? It's pushing them all up there. So now the fuel is entering on top of the piston as the exhaust is going out, 
Okay. There's your power stroke. And now look at this, guys. Ready? It made a full revolution. It's coming back up. The intake valve opens again. It is now sucking in fuel and air. Now remember how I just said it was it was pushing that fuel and air mixture up on top of the piston? It is. So now it's sucking in fuel and air at the bottom, exploding on the top, and starting it all over again. Pushing down, compressing, pushing up the, the ports on top of the piston, and the exhaust is coming out. So every single revolution that this thing makes, the points, the points are firing, the spark plug's firing, and it's driving the piston down. Every time that piston goes up, every time it goes up to the top, it fires. Okay? It is literally doing two things at once. It's a two-stroke. It sucks in the bottom and pushes at the bottom. It compresses on the top, it comes down, and opens up. It's also a valve. So the piston does multiple things, unlike a four-stroke. This is an 11 horsepower. This is a 49 and a half horsepower, uh, four and a half, 49 and a half millimeter piston. If this was an 11 horsepower four stroke, the piston would have to be like that big. Okay? It'd be huge. These things are nice and light and they put out a ton of power. All right, let's keep, let's keep going. So, what would happen if we rotated this valve backwards? Because a lot of people say to me, Kevin, I don't know if I installed it backwards or not. Well, here's how you tell. We know that when the piston's traveling up, it is sucking the fuel up or it's compressing. It's, it's doing one of the two things, right? It's either sucking up or when it comes down, it's compressing the bottom of the piston. Okay? So right now, it's at the top. You can see how the valve is opening. That's incorrect. So the piston goes down. Right now, it should be pushing fuel and air up the transfer port. But it can't. Now it's pushing the fuel out the carburetor. That's incorrect. And now the valve closes all the way down at the bottom. Also incorrect. So that valve right there is incorrectly installed. Let's flip it over. See what we got. Okay. Piston's at the bottom. It starts to come up. Now the piston's sucking up. And the fuel in there can get in. It's all the way at the top. It fired. Now it's driving it down. Now it's compressing. Now it's pushing the fuel and air up the transfer ports. See? Going back up. Sucking air more in fuel mixture in. And blowing up the one that's on top of it. So there you have it guys. That's how it works. And that is how you correctly install a valve. And that's how you can tell if your valve is incorrectly installed. So you got to remember the bottom part of the piston does a lot of work on a two stroke. It's that simple. I hopefully you guys uh, found this video informational and I hope it helps you ins correctly install your rotary valve because it's very important. Your bike won't run and if you were able to get a start, you would have no power. There's no way this thing could make power. And I hope you learned something about your crank seals too because the crank seal is not just here. A lot of people think that this is the only crank seal in the motor, this one and the one on the other side. No. On these rotary valves, there are more than just two. There is one here, one on the magneto side. You got your O-ring. And then, you also have this one. Oh, I'll take the key away. Hold on. This one. So this fits inside of here. And this sleeve is actually what your oil, your crank seal rides on. So you have an O-ring, a crank seal, and a big diameter O-ring. Don't forget your keyway too. I also want to show you guys about the keyway. The key is also heavier duty than the other side, than the magneto side. Okay? It's thicker and fatter. So you got to make sure you put that on there. So hopefully that helps you guys out. And this driver, that's what this is called, the flywheel driver, right here, can be installed in either direction. There is no there is no difference on this one because no matter which way you rotate it, it's going to be in the same direction. Now, I want to talk to you guys real quick about the automatic oiler. I always preach to you guys the automatic oiler is better than a premix. 
Why is that? Because the automatic, all right, let's start off from the beginning. When you have a premix and you run premix through this intake, okay, only premix goes through here and it lubricates whatever it can as you, you know, you're going to get barely droplets of it, okay? With the auto lube, when it comes through this valve right here, this check valve, it continuously lubes even when the valve is closed. See, when you do a premix, it only lubricates when the valve is open. The auto lube lubes all the time. So you see this channel right here on the engine. Pull you guys up. That is for the oiler to, to oil that crank bearing. If you're only getting oil to that bearing when this window is open, guess what? You're cutting your oil, your oil supply short. That also is not good. Because the only oil ports on this engine, I don't know if you can see it or not, is right there in that corner right there. That's where it gets, so when it's pushing the oil, when the piston's traveling down and it's pushing the oil up, it's also pushing oil into that hole. It's also pushing it into this one. Okay? And when it's not when it's not getting the um when the valve is closed, it's still getting oil from the other side. Okay? So keep that in mind. The automatic oiler is the way to go on these rotary valve engines. Premix will only damage your valve. So that's what I got for you. And I said to you guys early on, you're going to need a micrometer um, or a caliber vernier to measure the thickness of this because they do wear out. So it is a wearable item. So you're going to have to get the rotary valve. You're going to have to get the O-rings and the, and the seal. So keep that all in mind. I Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I know it's kind of a you know, a crazy video, you know, showing you guys how the, how the valves work. And hopefully you guys can follow me on that. Um, just remember, it, it rotates clockwise. And your window of opportunity is from here to there. And we're going to show you guys um, on another video later on how to modify this to get a little bit more power out of your engine. Which we're going to be doing on the KE-102 build. So, anyway... Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. If you guys have any questions, by all means, please ask them. Because the only stupid question is the question not asked. You know, doesn't matter what the question is. So I, hopefully you guys end up getting some uh, information that's usable for you. And hopefully it shows you guys the correct way of putting on your valve. Alright guys, I'm out for now. And I will talk to you guys later.